Okay. Okay. At this time, I'd like to call a meeting to order. We can all stand for a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, justice. If we could remain standing for a minute, I'd like to recognize how public violence for all the 9 11 victims, and the current victims that are suffering from COVID 19. Thank you very much. It's time. Does anyone wish to? to or photograph the meeting. First, notify the chair, who will then inform the public for Massachusetts meeting law, July 2010. Such audio or video recording may not interfere with the meeting. Being said, okay. public comment. Comments are welcome during the public comment segment. Segment forwards comments to our recording secretary and Maria Fidette. Greater Bethlehem Oak Tech dot ed. No later than 3 p.m. on Monday, September 13th, 21. Okay. Is there any public comments? I'm unaware of any public comments at the moment. Mrs. Fidette has been out of the office, and so access to that uh, voicemail has been difficult. But any public comments that were submitted will be read uh, at the next uh, school committee meeting. All right, Mr. Shea, <laughs> Mr. Watson. <laughs> okay, reading of the notice of the minutes. Meeting, we've done that. Reports, approval of bills. Motion be in order to. To approve. A motion on the floor. Second. A motion second. On the question. Question. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Contract for design and service for replacement of six HVAC units. The business manager will give us a little update on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In front of you, you have the award letter that will be sent to CA Crowley Engineering Firm for the designer selection services for the replacement of six HVAC units on the roof. Mr. Aruda, the facilities manager, and I reviewed all of the eight submissions that we had. We evaluated each submission based on the criteria of being a member of the designer of services. They had to demonstrate that they had participated in at least three similar projects within the last five years. They had to have history of work in the public sector. They had to have similar size and scope of the project that we were bidding uh, for. Well, the design services for the project, excuse me. Um, we also did evaluation on their ability of being an MCPPO and knowing the laws in regards to the MCPPO organization. And they needed to be affiliated with ADA compliant requirements. Um, once Mr. Aruna and I reviewed the eight applicants, we then narrowed it down to three based on the criteria that we had put in place. We did a call to the references that they listed all three organizations, we called all three references. And from there, Mr. Arud and I determined that the CA Crowley engineering firm would be the best suit for our project needs, the design of services. Uh, motion be in order to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Made a second. At the further on the question of the business manager and the proposal they have. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No voted. Okay, we also have approval of the rental application, please. Thank you. Um, excuse me, in working with Mr. Mathia for some organizations that wanted to utilize our school fields, uh, we realized that the rental application that we had for the district was for every area of the school and for some parts of the facility outside as far as the field house or even the actual field use, uh, some of the things didn't apply. So we separated the application and that's why you have two in front of you. 
Uh, one is the rental application for the building, such as the cafeteria, the auditorium, uh, a classroom. Uh, that is one application. And then the other one is the athletic field or the field house rental. Um, in this application, it was determined that the fees for additional rentals at the bottom of the second page, well, actually the third, because the second page has a second side to it. At the bottom of the third page, we needed to change the rates of the per hours because the uh, employees that will sign up to do these events, their pace have increased with cost of living adjustments or their step of lane increase. And what we were charging was not enough to cover what their hourly rate was at the time of them performing the service that we needed for the rental. So we just increased every value by just $5 an hour to get us pretty much even as far as what the employee gets paid per hour for the uh, duty that they would sign up for, whether it be custodian or lighting or site director. Um, that's about pretty much it that was changed. Um, you will see that there are different fees if you are school affiliated, if you are a nonprofit, or you are a profit making business. Those fees fluctuate based on what type of organization you are uh, for your actual rental of the facility as your base charge. And then anything you need on top of that would go to the other two categories of per hour rates. So we're just asking the committee if you could approve the two new applications and then the new rates on the bottom portion for the additional fees. I do like that you incorporated and included breakdown and then set up fees too. So that's very good. Uh, motion be in order to approve. Motion to approve. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Have to further on the question. Have to further on the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Hello, Superintendent, Mr. Watson. Uh, we have a new shadow. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, so, members of the committee, I, I wanted to take a moment every month to kind of um, recognize the outstanding contributions of a staff member or a small team of staff members um, on kind of on the go forward. So, it's going to be a regular monthly uh, agenda item, at least for this school year, so we see it. And this doesn't undermine any of the contributions that are happening every day. By our team, uh, as you can imagine, getting school operational for 2,119 kids and hundreds of faculty and staff members every day is an enormous challenge for all of us. Uh, but I think it's important that we not only recognize the great work that our people do each and every day, but when folks go above and beyond to help others, uh, that we take a special moment, a quick moment at our monthly meeting to kind of recognize that effort. And so tonight, I want to recognize uh, the efforts of Joanne Romanelli. Uh, who I think has gone above and beyond uh, her responsibilities as the Academy B administrator in the early days of the school year. We continue to look for an EMT instructor, um, and absent that person being able to fill that role, Joanne has jumped in to that classroom herself to teach that class. Uh, she has been instrumental in the Bionics Now Test and Stay program, which has literally tested hundreds of folks, staff, and students alike as part of a plan to make sure that we keep those kids in school, those staff members in school, as opposed to quarantining them. And we'll be talking about that shortly tonight. Uh, but Joanne has been instrumental in that endeavor as well. And that doesn't undermine the great work that each and every other staff member has done. Uh, but I think it's worthy of special recognition tonight. And so uh, the first superintendent shout out, I'd like to commend Ms. Romanelli publicly for going above and beyond her work as the Academy B administrator uh, to help the school in multiple aspects uh, on the go forward. So. Congratulations uh, to Joanne and also to the entire team for their work on, on the start of the school year. Do you have any actions necessary on that? Anybody have any comments on that? Uh, again, uh, like the, like this con like this concept, I think it's even just little things like that we don't hear about, so I appreciate it. Comments? Well, the comments, okay, we'll move right along. Uh, COVID-19 protocols, again, Superintendent Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Again, another quick change where we have graphs uh, and things uh, for, for you folks to see in our packets. We all know what we're talking about. We've uh, sent the packet electronically now to Mr. Pius so he can broadcast that for viewers at home to be able to take a look at that. They don't need to look at me talking about what this issue is. They need to be able to see what the information is that we're, that we're trying to share. And so what we wanted to talk about quickly tonight was both the results of our student and staff 
vaccination surveys. And so as you'll see, currently we have 496 responses from the student vaccination surveys where 80, nearly 81% of students have responded that they are in fact vaccinated. Uh, that's great, except it's about a quarter of our kids. And so we, we really can't celebrate too much that we're at the 80% mark because we don't know where three quarters of our students actually are in terms of their vaccination status. Uh, my guess is it probably falls pretty much in line with what's happened regionally. Um, the vaccination rates among students 12 to 15 and 16 to 19 in all three of our sending districts hovers between 28 and 38 uh, percent. So we're probably pretty close to a lockstep with those numbers. There's a lot of work to do. Uh, the good news is we ran our second vaccination clinic today, this afternoon, and we had north of 60 community members uh, that showed up to be vaccinated. Uh, that's up from 43 or so, 44 or so in late August when we ran our first clinic. Uh, so we'll report that to the local board of health uh, as well during our call next week. Um, we need more of that to happen community wide uh, for us to get to get those numbers on the staff side. The results are obviously a little bit more encouraging. We've heard from 245 uh, staff members. Nearly 93% reporting that they are vaccinated um, again. This is self reported information. We have not asked uh, for any concrete information. We are monitoring that stuff statewide. Um, at this point, there has been no mandate around vaccinations uh, for schools, uh, but we are having those conversations are occurring uh, at, at state level. So that's the information around the COVID-19 protocols. The other thing I would mention to you is we did, uh, as I mentioned, the buy next now test and stay protocol, which happens in the student forum every morning. Uh, last week, we tested 381 staff and students. Uh, we had a positivity rate of 1.57%. So just in terms of context, uh, that is considerably better than what the positivity rates were in Dartmouth, New Bedford, and Fairhaven. Uh, in Dartmouth, it was 5.46% as of Thursday, 3.28% in Fairhaven, and 4.84% in New Bedford. And so what we can glean from that early data is the fact that the mitigation strategies like masking uh, are helping to reduce the spread of COVID-19 um, in schools. And again, the lion's share of those tests are negative. So those staff and students who would have been quarantined last year are remaining in school. I expect next week those numbers will be even higher. Uh, we tested over 180 people today alone and nearly 100 yesterday. So uh, close contacts are growing. We get positive cases. We're testing those folks. But again, those numbers this week, which will be reported next week, are uh, very favorable in terms of positivity test rates. Uh, I am sending out a weekly uh, superintendent communication Sunday nights to all staff. Uh, one of the key sections of that is the COVID-19 protocols and data in which we're highlighting the information to be transparent of what's happening within the school and comparing that data to what's happening in the state, uh, in the region. And so I will be including all of those superintendent updates in your October packet so you can see the communication that's going out to all staff on Sunday nights. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, believe, I don't believe there's any action necessary on that. Any questions on Mr. Watson? Due to okay, moving right along. Full reopening. Oh, I'm sorry. Professional development update. Again, superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Williams and, and Mr. Watt for their work around the professional development schedule. I wanted to include this in your packets. Uh, having approved the first unit A teachers contract in July. This was the schedule for the first two professional development days for all unit A members and administrators on August 25th and 26th. I wanted you to be able to see uh, what the agenda looked like uh, for those two days. And I also want to quickly run through uh, a feedback survey that we sent to all staff immediately following uh, the professional development uh, in order to get their feedback on how they thought the first two days went. Um, and that feedback will be used as we build next year's school calendar to decide how we want to address uh, some of these issues. So we asked our first question of them was, were you an academic or vocational teacher? You'll see that of the responses we got, uh, it's nearly 50-50, but slightly more vocational educators responded than academic educators. Our second question focused on the annual required mandated trainings for the Department of Ed, which included things like civil rights, 504 and IEP compliance, uh, we asked the question, this has to be done every year by every school district by September 30th. This year, we chose to do that during the two 
professional development in service days rather than first half day, which is this Friday. So our question was, would you rather complete this during the full day professional development uh, as opposed to our first half day? And you'll see the responses were nearly two to one uh, in favor of that being the approach. There is some work that we're going to do, things that we noticed about trying to separate those presentations because it's never easy to sit through multiple presentations that are back to back. So there's some administrative work we're going to do about sp splitting that up and separating it. But it was good to hear that nearly uh, by a two to one margin staff preferred to do that now rather than uh, on our first half day. And then we also asked staff about time collaborating with their colleagues to rank from one to five. Did you get not enough time or too much time? You'll see that most folks felt like it was just right in the middle. Although if asked, they felt like they didn't get enough as opposed to too much. And so that information can kind of uh, help us as we prepare for next school year's reopening in terms of maybe we need to provide a few more minutes of collaboration time between team members in the shops and in academics to get ready for the school year. And then finally, our last question was, uh, did the two days prior to the school year provide you enough time to prepare for the arrival of students to your classroom? You'll see that 52% uh, said not enough. A uh, small majority, 44% felt like it was just right, and a couple felt as though it was too much. Uh, so we're in the ballpark of what we're going to do. We may tweak that a little bit to provide a little bit more time for collaboration, as I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, with staff on the golf course. So uh, that's how we rolled out the beginning years. That's the feedback we got from the staff, um, and that'll be used by the team to, to kind of plan forward for next year. Thank you. Question, Mr. Shin. Yeah, the last the last bullet you talked about in time. Um, I know some districts are different. One that's a little far away from us that only teachers could go in like one or two days ahead of time. But our staff is able to come in really a number of times that they want. Mm -hmm. right? So if they're feeling they're not getting enough time in two days, there are an opportunity for staff to come in a week before, three days. Sure. Before. Because I think sometimes. You know, people assume that they're only limited to two. I just want to make sure that, you know, this is a little different here. Uh, you're not limited to that only two. You, if you feel it takes you another extra two days to set up your room, come in a week before it stops. So, yeah. so I think that's, I think that would message be sent that, you know, that's okay. Not a negative thing, but if you need more time, you do have more time at the school. Thank Perfect. you. Yep, we can we can certainly convey that uh, to the team as well. Any other additional consideration? I don't believe there's any action necessary in that. Uh, so we'll move right along. Uh, school reopening, Principal Williams. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. <clears throat> yes, indeed, we've started. We've opened up the school year. I think it's been a positive, exciting start to the school year. Obviously, not without any speed bumps with the school this large. Uh, but Sarah will talk a lot about some of the exciting things coming up for all of our students in the building. But one of the most important things for me as we roll out this year is to really try to instill and open the school year with a sense of normalcy, unlike what we've seen in the last two years. And so, for the first time in two years, we've had our class meetings. Uh, Mr. Pimentel, Assistant Principal, Assistant Principal Pimentel. Um, presented the class meeting to our freshmen and myself and a number of other administrators presented to our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And we spoke to our students, all 2,100 of our students, about we instilled respect, our expectations for, our, for the school. Mr. Brinker spoke about attendance. Mr. Karen, our assistant principal of grades 10, 11, and 12, spoke about what the expectations are around suspension, expulsion, security, and Mr. Murr spoke about scheduling. Dr. Larkin introduced our guidance team. And Skills USA was also spoken about, spoke about yearbook. Student council spoke to the students. And also the class advisors spoke about some of the fun events that were coming up for the school year. So for me, I think the class meetings are so vital because it sets the tone for the year. And I think we've had a very positive start to the school year. And I think you can attribute some of that to these class meetings. A couple other things I want to talk about is our incident command team, something that we hadn't done in a couple of years, and that is a team that is assembled, an assembly of myself, the assistant principals, uh, Mr. Aruda, our facilities director, and a host of other people, really around ensuring that our fire alarm, our fire drills, state procedures, Alice lockdown, 
are done with fidelity and that they are executed officially and that everyone in the building is aware of those procedures. All in addition, we spoke about our flip charts, our go buckets and the different things that we have to keep the people in this building safe and the building itself safe. And so that has been been reassembled and we have met once already. This Friday, we have a rear door bus evacuation training as well as a bus driver appreciation breakfast. So again, we've started off, I think, full steam ahead. It's been exciting. And I think everyone in the building is feeling the same way. Any questions of Mr. Williams? Yeah. So on this, uh, on this, you, uh, with the mentoring programs for the freshmen and coming, introduce that. Yes, Dr. Larkin introduced the mentor program as well. Yeah. I'd just like to commend you and the whole team, Mr. Larkin, and everybody. Mr. Shea and I were there at the opening and quite interesting to see how you handled 10,000 kids coming in and associated parents and whatever. So it was very, very interesting. So I also like to thank uh, Mr. Toomey. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Principal Williams for his work. So as you know, we're in the midst of a little bit of a transition, right? To kind of focus on a lot of the district work that needs to be done. And and he was hired to be the school school leader, right? And that's that's the role of principal. And so I'd like to publicly recognize his efforts. He's been a lot of long days. Uh, it's a tough job. This is a, a job that was done by multiple people over the last long period of time. And so we, we've made some shifts and he's been visible in the hallways, uh, in the lunchroom. It's been exactly what I had envisioned when I spoke to you about it uh, six months ago. And so he deserves to be commended and I want him to feel good about the work that he's done to start up a school year uh, because it's not an easy job. And uh, there, there's more work that needs to be done for us to make sure that we're on in the right path. From an instructional standpoint, and it's going to be a bumpy year and him and I have spoken about that a little bit in terms of him shouldering a lot of that work as we shift some of those resources around and, and I'm really proud of him and I want to make sure the committee knows that his his efforts are both recognized and appreciated. Good job. Any other questions or points? Okay, again, there's any questions needed on that? Uh, any action? Okay, we're moving right along. Director of Equity, Diversity, Inclusiveness, and Family Engagement Update, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. And we are preparing to move forward with the committee. The committee is just about formed. Uh, as I mentioned in the past, I've asked Principal Williams and Human Resource Director Markey to co-chair that committee, which will include six to eight members uh, to begin the screening process of those applications. Uh, the goal is to present me with two or three finalists. Uh, folks that the team believes can do the job. Uh, I will meet individually with those people um, and make the decision at that point. So I expect that process to be lifted this week. Um, it'll probably take us a week or so to review those applications, get those interviews scheduled. Um, we're probably looking at at least a two week process from today uh, before the finalists are, are landing near my desk. Um, at the end of September, first week of October, I will meet with those folks appointment of that, which I hope to be able to announce uh, at the October school committee meeting, subject to, of course, successful uh, a, a successful contract negotiation, um, give that person a chance if they're leaving another employer to be able to give notice. But I am optimistic that by the middle of next month, we will have our first director of equity, diversity, inclusivity, and family engagement on staff. Uh, we are working in a number of other grant opportunities through SR3, which we'll talk about momentarily as well as some equity gaps to build that arm of the district. Uh, information will be rolled out next month, but I, I just wanted the committee to feel and be updated on the progress that we're making uh, towards this appointment. Thank you, Mr. Chumi. Questions? Hudson. Questions, the motion of being honored to that report. Motion made, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. So voted. Uh, moving right along, admissions regulations update. Again, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Very quick uh, update on this. I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Toomey and Dr. Marlin, member Dr. Marlin, as well as member Mr. Durgan, who have been uh, part of the admissions subcommittee review team. We've met a few times. We have another meeting scheduled for September 27th, in which we'll be uh, kind of finalizing some uh, internal draft uh, discussions. Around an admissions policy, I wanted to let the committee know tonight in your packets, you'll see uh, the chapter 74 CBTE 
admissions policy submission deadline waiver form, which I submitted on behalf of the district to the commissioner's office earlier. I think it was last week. Um, that original deadline was October 1st. I indicated in that submission, we will not be ready on October 1st, that we will be ready at some time in the middle of December. I put a December 14th school committee date for final ratification uh, with the material sent to the department by Friday, December 17th. That request was approved by the commissioner. That's what you see uh, included here. Uh, I am cautiously optimistic we'll beat that timeline, but we'll need at least two reads on an admissions policy. And at best, it'll be October, November. At worst, October, December, November, December uh, as a timeline, because we certainly want to involve the community in this discussion. We know how lively this has been uh, in our area. So we've got some work to do once we work on our own internal procedures in a couple of weeks. Okay, any questions on Sharing and connecting with Mob and all that. Are others also extending? Yes. Is that kind of a norm, normal thing rather than the outcut? Yeah. So at the at the retreat, there was there was discussion around most uh, of the Mob districts have requested an extension. Uh, those calls with the Mob superintendents are beginning again this Thursday afternoon. There'll be weekly on Thursdays. I would surmise that this is going to be something we're talking about as a group, uh, especially those six or eight schools that have been identified. Mainly, but yes, to my knowledge, all of those schools have requested an extension. Yeah, that's so it's not unusual to be delayed and try to be on the same page. Thank you. Our understanding from the meeting 70% of the school systems involved requested extension. Good to know. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Watson? Motion be in order to accept this report. So moved. Okay. Seconded. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? All so voted. Uh, POSIP report. Mr. Pius. Mr. Toomey, uh, last year we implemented a program uh, through POSIP. So the reason why we implemented POSIP was to uh, enable a two way communication with families. We want to know what we're doing well. Uh, what our family's concerns, how can we improve as a school? Uh, and POSIP allows that two way communication to happen bi weekly. So, uh, last week was our first, what we call a pulse check to families. And out of the responses, 81% of families are happy how they're going, 14% are mostly happy, and 5% are not happy. Based on the grades, uh, ninth grade families are 89% happy. 10th grade families, 82%. 11th grade, 75%. And 12th grade, 69%. So again, this gives families an opportunity to reach out, voice their concerns. They can sent out through an email or a text bi-weekly. Um, they also have an opportunity to praise how we do things. And a couple of quotes. Uh, Voke is always good at keeping families informed of everything we need to know. Nurses are amazing and very helpful. My son has flourished, flourished since GMBVT last year as a freshman. His confidence has skyrocketed. He speaks highly of all his teachers and coaches. Last year gave me a window into his classroom with at-home learning. The educators I saw kept the kids interested and engaged for most of their lessons. It was pretty amazing. So again, we do get praise, but we also get some, some concerns. So follow up is we have someone in, in school who then calls anyone who leaves their information and we address any concerns or any questions they may have. And that is that is the purpose of POSIP. POSIP is short for parent gossip. <laughs> We'll continue doing that this year. Cool. Any questions of Ms. Barrow? Just one question. For instance, like in the twelfth grade, if now is there a reason, or do you, based on that information, what kind of follow up would you do to change that? Up? So, so what we do is every there's a report per grade, and then. 
know, how they answer it or any concerns that they mentioned, we'll dive into a little bit deeper and someone will contact those families who choose to be contacted uh, to address any of those concerns. Last it does vary between grades, and usually based on last year's rates, uh, the ninth grade families are usually higher with how we're like capping out how we're doing things in our school. Last year was low because of COVID and, you know, quite yeah, different. Last year we had the uh, librarian. Uh, Two thirds of the year, there weren't kids in the library. So one of her chief responsibilities was to contact any parent on the POSIP survey who uh, had expressed a desire to be contacted. So every other week, I received a, a report from her that basically said, "This is this is the parent who called. This was their issue. This is how I went about resolving it." I, I would guess that you know seniors are all, we're, we're definitely a tougher spot, right? And we, Sarah and I have talked about this. Like we're working really hard to try to bring back some normalcy. Um, so as a parent, I'm sure that was the last two years have been really tough on on all parents, but particularly on parents who are watching the juniors and seniors go through high school and having a lot of those memorable events kind of side side stripe. So we heard a lot about that, and I'm sure that was well, I'm not going to quantify that with any data point tonight. I, I, that's probably a big reason why we weren't quite as positive with some of those. I mean, seven out of ten people feeling positive is is a good number, but I'm sure that a fraction of those people were at least disappointed. By some of the decisions around proms and, and and those kinds of things, which were difficult to implement during the middle of the year. Just a guess. Any other questions? Uh, again, no action is really needed on that. And now, our student representative, Nessie, probably. <laughs> um. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Um. This is my report for um, the end of August and September. Um, so first off, personally, I am happy to be back in school and I know a lot of my peers um, are happy to be back in school. Um, it's nice to kind of just go to lunch like with actual people, you know, what I mean? <laughs> and talk and not have like a screen be like, hey, you can go to lunch now, you know what I mean? Um, it's also nice to like, engage with our teachers and actually meet them face to face and have like a better lesson. I know um, one of my my biotech teacher, he was saying it was difficult last year not being able to do labs because that's basically what that that class is. Um, so I know it's a lot more engagement along both with both students and like teachers as well. Um, another thing that I mean, it's kind of a concern, at least for me personally, though, um, is figuring out an outfit now to wear to school. I'm not gonna lie, I wore a nice sweatshirt, but I did have sweatpants on <laughs> Like other than that, all things are good, you know, coming in school, it's better to be in person, uh, especially same with shop as well. Um, so first off, uh, we had our senior sunrise for senior class. Um, that was actually a really good turnout. A lot of students were there. Um, it kind of just started the school year off on a good foot, um, especially for the senior class. I know you kind of gave your input on that last part about like how some things were kind of stripped away um, from the juniors and seniors specifically. So that was kind of nice to kind of like get something that we can do. Um, same with like the backpack idea um, that I mentioned last time. There were a lot of cool backpacks. I'm still wearing my backpack. Um, so that was also, I know I'm on, I'm on co-op. So I couldn't, I didn't have it. And then I had my cheer backpack, but that's boring. So next time I will, I am going to bring it next meeting. Okay. I can hold you to it. Yes, you can hold me to it. I will bring it. Um, <laughs> But that's also fun and it's just like, it's kind of something silly and to think about like when you see a backpack, you're like, oh, that's a senior, you know what I mean? Something like that. Um, beginning, well, we did plan um, a back to school event for the senior class. It's called um, Falling Back to School because it's in the fall. Um, so it's basically just something again to raise spirit and to get seniors excited for their last year. Um, they're able to bring an underclassman. Um, so that could be from any grade, like I said, underclassmen doesn't have to be a junior specifically, um, just to kind of get them involved as well. So it's gonna be like a dunk tank. I know there's gonna be like backyard games, inflatables, lots of contests. Um, and again, it is a fundraiser. So that's also cool that it'll be raising money um, for hopefully a prom, which is what um, the student council for the seniors, at least um, the class council is striving for. Um, I know that the junior uh, class officers are also striving for a junior banquet this year. Um, I talked to one of them today, actually, um, a member of the council, and they have a couple fundraisers that they're kind of getting the ball rolling. 
one. So that's kind of exciting for them. Um, I am going to get back to you guys on what the freshmen and sophomore are doing. Like I said, I was on co-op. So hopefully uh, next time I can kind of give you an update on the um, underclassmen. Um, something else that we're kind of trying to do is again with prom, I'm trying to do a homecoming. That's a huge question that every everyone is asking us. So try and get that normalcy back. Um, it is difficult, obviously, because COVID is still around and we want everyone to be safe, but we're just going to try our best to get things going back to how they were. Um, and same with spirit days. So the football team, I know they won um, their first game, which was very exciting. Um, I know a lot of students are very, very excited about doing themes for the football games, and that's just bringing students closer together and bringing school spirit around and just having like an all around good time. So that's going to be really fun. Um, you guys can come to the games too. This week is neon theme. So go ahead and buy a highlighter kind of shirt. You know what I mean? Nice and bright like that. And um, just come support the school. Um, lastly, let's see. Um, so also the student council is trying to um, get a principal's day um, um, sometime in May. That's just a pr principal's day. Obviously, we kind of only have one, but also it's going to be like an administrative day uh, for students to thank their administrators um, and teachers and obviously the principal and stuff like that, um, just for everything that they're doing. I know before you guys were kind of saying you mentioned uh, Mr. Williams and how he's very interactive. And I also wanted to say thank you um, because as a student, as a senior, especially, um, it's nice to like see you all the time. You know what I mean? Um, with Everything. It's like either way I go, it's always Mr. Williams is always there, always there, like in our corner to back us up. So also really good. And same, I like speaking with Mr. Watson. I know he helps us get stuff done. He tries his best definitely to help um, the upperclassmen. So that's really fun. Um, and just it just makes everyone feel nice and kind of heard, appreciated to be here at school. Um, so that is kind of the end of my report. Um, thank you for. <laughs> Any questions or concerns? Mr. Shea, two quick questions. Do you have a date for that uh, fall back camp? Uh, yeah, October 2nd. Um, I want to say it's four to nine, or it might be five to nine. I, I can double check on okay, that time for you. October 2nd? And yes. The second question is I may be mistaken, but at the end of the last meeting, I thought that you were involved in heavy discussion with Mr. Williams about what backpack he was on where. Yeah. Yes, and I didn't see that too. On the first day of school, well, I went up okay. to. Okay, I'm, I'm just wondering if he had pulled through with that. Fortunately, he did not. We'll see when he comes up with, with the neon shirt. That's what we're going to get. That's the next step. I know. Well, Superman. I, I went up to him. I didn't go up to him. I asked where his backpack was, but I'll let it slide because I didn't bring my backpack right. today. So we have our backpacks. We'll show you guys. Um, no, you guys, I told you guys to bring your backpacks too. So I'm still waiting to see that at the next meeting. I hope I, hope, I, hope I see it guys. <laughs> no? Yeah, right. Hey, theme day for principal day. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Follow through now, right? I don't have anyone to run against, but you never run for you know. <laughs> Give me something that. <laughs> it takes you out of the league, you know. <laughs> so I'll take my grandson. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Are there any other questions of Sarah? Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, moving right along on the new business, uh, new superintendent program. Our introduction, Mr. Watson. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Yes, I want to introduce Maureen LaCroix. She is my uh, NISA new superintendent induction program mentor. Uh, I've been working with her since July. We've had a few in person meetings, uh, as well as uh, she has been here, and we've also met remotely with, with other new superintendents from across the Commonwealth. So I wanted to formally introduce her to the committee. And also give her the opportunity to kind of introduce us and speak to you directly. So, Watson, um, and thank you for having me this evening. I'll be very brief. Um, the, the new superintendent induction program is a partnership program between the School Committee Association, the Superintendent Association in Massachusetts, and DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. 
And the program was designed 13 years ago. We're in our 12th cohort now to support the leadership of new superintendents in Massachusetts. And the program is designed so that there are coaches, such as myself, um, who are retired superintendents of schools from Massachusetts who work with the new superintendents. So we work as a collaborative group where the coaches are constantly learning together and learning with our new cohort superintendents. Superintendent Watson is part of one of our largest cohorts coming in. Um, he came in sooner than July, but the cohort officially began on July 1st. And we have more than 30 superintendents who are brand new in Massachusetts this year to their jobs. So the design of the program is that we bring superintendents together <laughs> on a monthly basis when the school year starts as part of what we call content institutes where they are learning together. Our focus is on leadership. Our focus is on student uh, achievement and on student learning. Um, so they come together, they come from all parts of the state, from vocational schools, from rural schools, from some of our largest cities in the state, and from suburban districts. And people might say, well, that's kind of a mix of all different kinds of jobs. What we've learned in this program is superintendent leadership at, at its core is similar across districts in terms of what are the skills you need? What are the things that you need to pay attention to as a superintendent if you wanna be successful? And that's our job. We want you to be successful in your job as superintendent. You will hear tonight from Superintendent Watson about his entry plan. And that is part of the NISA program. It's a requirement that you develop an entry plan, that you apprise the school committee of that entry plan that entry plan will lead to a report of entry findings, which you will hear about again in the spring from the superintendent. And then starting in the spring into the summer, the superintendent will be working on a strategy for district improvement. That strategy will cover three to five years of work usually, and it will focus again on students and on student achievement and on the instructional core in your school. So it's a very structured program. We think that it's a very supportive program for superintendents. And we feel happy that we work in Massachusetts where 12, 13 years ago, people recognized bringing people into such a significant job as the superintendency hires support. So that's when Desi the Superintendents Association and the School Committee Association came together and supported this program. So I'm very happy to be here supporting your superintendent and feel um, that your future here as a district with him as the helm at the helm will be continue to be promising. So I'm really happy to be here working. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for us? Thank you very much for your time, and Mr. Watson, I'll sit with that often. I understand you're leaving after this. So. I'm going to listen to his right. Oh, you're going to listen. Yeah. Okay, very good. He's probably going to, going to give me some grade on that or some feedback. <laughs> I'm going to dismiss the professor early. I'm, all, I'm always okay with him. That's all right. At this time, Mr. Watson, pause. Anna Watson will give his entry plan. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. In your packets um, is the superintendent director's entry plan, uh, which was promised uh, during the transitionary period for you. I just want to highlight a few a few pieces of this that I think are at the core of the work that I am striving to do um, every day. First of all, building a plan, comprehensive plan that engages the entire team, all of the stakeholders, from teachers to teaching assistants to administrators to you folks. To city council members, to sports of selectmen, sending district school committees, our students. That's an important piece of the work that lies ahead. Uh, one of the most important things I can do is make sure that I hear the voices of all of the stakeholders. And so 
Much of that work was done during the pre entry or transitionary phase. There is more work to do uh, this fall as I try and build, especially with student groups. And so I'll, work, I'll reach out and work with Sarah on that as we try to build small student groups uh, so that I really understand the issues from all aspects of our school communities. As I said during my interview and during this process, I will make every decision as superintendent is in the best interest of students. I hope that I can make decisions that are in the best interest of all our community stakeholders. Uh, but I have to put my head on the pillow every night. The only way I can do that is if I make sure that those voices of students in this school uh, are always at the center of what my thoughts are. And so that will be uh, the key driver of all of those decisions. Trust is an important piece of that work achieved. And so uh, I pride myself on having very open, very honest, very direct conversations with people. Um, it's important the way those conversations happen. And so while I'm a human and I often can get emotional like anyone else, um, taper those emotions, even when other folks don't. Um, it's important that I always demonstrate a calm and steady hand as I lead the district. But I want to make sure that people know that when they have something to say, I will hear them. That they can expect to get honest and direct feedback back from me. Even when we don't agree, uh, those are, those are important steps. And so I want you folks to know as the school committee members, uh, that that is what I promised uh, when I interviewed, it is what I will do as superintendent director. Um, I also included a listing of all the documents I've reviewed, uh, as part of the pre entry phase. So that you can feel comfortable that I am up to speed on a wide range of topics, including uh, organizational charts. You're aware of the fact that I've been heavily involved in labor negotiations for some time. I've looked at every individual employment contract in the district. I'm aware of threatened and pending lawsuits, as well as recently settled lawsuits, all of the budgets, all of the grants, all of the program advisory minutes, uh, education evaluation documents, technology uh, plans, capital improvement plans, and the like. You, I have reviewed each of those documents that I've listed there. Uh, I consider myself to be up to speed on every one of those areas. I also included a section of the thoughts, questions that guided my transition meetings with administrators, individual teachers, as well as community stakeholders. During the entry plan uh, piece that is coming now, I intend to hold additional small group conversations uh, with students, administrators, and teachers. I will be offering again this fall the opportunity to school based administrators, teachers, and students for the first time the opportunity to sit with me for 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I was pleased last spring to hear directly from 85 teachers. Uh, I want to make sure that I give the opportunity to other teachers who maybe didn't take advantage of that during the pre transitionary phase uh, to take advantage of that now. Uh, so that offer will come in October. I intend to sit down with those groups next month. Uh, short intervals, small groups with students in particular, so that they don't feel uncomfortable uh, in a one on one uh, environment. And I work with Sarah and other uh, class offices to make sure that we're getting a cross section of our student population. As Mrs. LaCroix mentioned, uh, I plan to present an entry plan report on my findings related to this in February or March of 2019. Are there any questions of Superintendent? I just wanted to say that. Oh, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, Superintendent Benson is here for us and um, he's a terrific team, including Sarah. And um, forward to this coming year. Thank you, Dr. Morrow. Other questions? Okay. I believe we need a motion to. Action on this, so we move that along. Uh, Mo Tech Operation Compliance. Me ask update. Okay, so <clears throat> we got an NES uh, audit not too long ago. Okay, okay. So NES is an accreditation team that depends on a Department of Education audit. Um, they are a group of our peers that tour our school in each of our career and technical and educational areas. And share best practices how we can do better 
This team was led by Kathy Canole, a well-respected member of the Ottawa community. He greeted us with a team of 25 educators from across the state, focused on seven pre-selected standards. And they had certain number of indicators. They offered recommendations and accommodations to each of the standards, as well as 38 educational areas. The standards included core values and expectations, which had five indicators, nine accommodations, and nine recommendations. The curriculum had 10 indicators, accommodations, and seven recommendations. Instruction, six ind indicators, accommodations, four recommendations. Assessment, eight indicators, six accommodations, eight recommendations. Alternate leadership, 16 indicators, 10 accommodations, nine recommendations. Student services and support, 16 indicators, 10 accommodations, nine recommendations. School finance and community relations, 12 indicators, 10 accommodations, five, uh, nine recommendations. So all the indicators were 72 indicators, 49 accommodations, and 52 recommendations. 38 educational areas, we had 69 accommodations and 82 recommendations. For a total of 118 accommodations and 134 recommendations. Our last evaluation, 2009, Mr. Shea, we had 157 patients and 173 recommendations. We had 39 more accommodations and 39 more recommendations. All fairness to you, Mr. Shea, you had 12 indicators. So you're <laughs> uh, the major focus for the district, the General Advisory Committee. The district will reinstate the General Advisory Committee this year. Um, C profile listings. I'm analyzing the various software packages and platforms to track competencies in real time. Common planning and PLCs for vocational areas. This will be a district initiative and curriculum scope and sequence. Mr. Williams, Ms. Angelo, and the Academy administrators will lead this area of improvement. So that's just the beginning of a report that we'll continue to go on with. Right now, we've developed a spreadsheet and the academy administrators and the department heads, along with lead teachers, uh, inputting their status to each of the recommendations and commenting on the comments if they want, but they have to give something for every one of the 82 recommendations. And I'll share that out when we get there. Any questions on the process? I know you most, most of you were here with the dinner and everything. You know how it goes, but I just wanted to let you know where we stand. So this is a two year evaluation that we'll have done in one year, by the way, because of COVID. We kind of lost the year on this. Mr. Wall? Question. If anybody has a question, Mr. Watt, relative to the ask update, CBT advisory board? Going up, yeah. So they want us to, um, you know, establish a uh, general advisory committee, but we'll start with this year's program advisory will be head on held on October 20th at 6 p.m. So we've always done a good job with our program advisory committees. We've not always had a general advisory committee. General advisory committees consist of an advisory chairperson from each of the program advisory committees. The goal for the general advisory committee is to meet with the administration and the school committee and discuss their concerns and vision of their respective areas. They want to make sure that you have your concerns. Uh, Don McCann and I will coordinate both these events. Mr. Williams will run the program advisory, and the superintendent and I will facilitate the general advisory to assure they were able to meet with you and share their thoughts and areas for improvements. This way, so that they, they know that they've been heard through you, that we're not hiding anything, that they're speaking directly to you. Any questions? Mr. Watt, relative to the general advisory board meeting. Advisory committees, pretty well covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do the program advisory committee. That's, that's the one with all the areas. Um, each career and technical area has a program. The general would be the chairperson of each meeting with you. So we've always had the general uh, we've always had the program advisory committees. 
have had the general advice. We have, but it's been kind of in and out. Very good participation. Right. You're right about that. Sometimes two people show up. And it may be the same here, but we need to give that the olive branch. Questions? Um, any action is necessary on that one either. Okay, moving right along. Ursa free application grant. Um, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, included in your packet was the ESSA 3 grant application survey. This is a federal grant application we required to get stakeholder feedback around that. Those result, those were the questions that we sent out. We did have uh, detailed responses. Um, you have that handy. I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. Stewart so she can share uh, the results of that survey with you. Thank you. Um, so the survey that you have in front of you is emailed to parents, guardians, families, community members, which may, were made up from the advisory board uh, listing for all the 27 shops. It went to faculty, staff, everyone here in the district. We received 329 responses. From these responses, um, it was 28.9% of teachers, guidance, and nurses that responded. It was 55.6% of parents that responded. Um, they had a, a series of questions that you have in front of them that they had answered, whether they felt strongly, um, they agreed, they disagreed. That was for three of the questions. Then the fifth question that they had to answer was to choose three items that they felt the most strong about. So I was working with the team yesterday on working the items were, and from a very quick glance this morning, it seemed that the number one priority for both teachers, nurses, and guidance, and parents, families, and guardians was to provide additional staff, which is the very first option of the question number five, five to provide additional staff to provide instruction slash intervention for students to close the learning gaps. Um, the second top choice for them for families and teachers was social emotional needs of our students and their families. The third was a very comparable a percentage between families, parents, guardians, and teachers, guidance, nurses uh, was to continue with facility improvements for ventilation and also for additional supports for students, whether it be summer programs or after school programs. So those are the three priorities that we as a team will focus on when we are writing the grant so that we can make sure that we allocate the funds that we have been allocated by the state are properly based on this survey result. I'm still working on compiling the information and through Mr. Watson, we will get that to you. Um, but the 329 responses I can get percentages quickly, but then the other questions that they are being responses to openly, I have to sort through and make sure that um, we can get them in a decent sized document so that it's not overwhelming for you. We'll be uh, providing updates on this next month. The ESSA 3 grant application is due October 4th. 20% uh, of the funds that the district received are earmarked towards social emotional well being of, of students. And so, uh, when we have that plan in place, which we anticipate having ready for October 4th, we'll be sharing that. Uh, with the committee. Are there any questions? Uh, Watson or Stuart? To the survey? No questions? The motion is in order to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. Maybe second it on the question. Favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Moving right along. Superintendent District Smarty Goals. I thought that was a mistake when I first no, read it. No, it is not. It is not. Uh, thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, so, in, in your packets tonight, are my proposed uh, SMART goals for this for this year, including the new SMARTY goals for inclusivity and equity that are added to the back of the traditional SMART goals. Uh, I've laid out what I consider to be a pretty ambitious uh, goal setting. And, uh, I want that to be indicative of kind of what my philosophy around goals are. I, I, I understand the angst that comes with being a professional uh, and always wanting to feel like you're meeting or exceeding expectations. Um, but I think we always want to have a high bar, right? It's okay that we don't meet every single indicator. We should be striving 
to meet educators. I'll give you an example. About five years ago, we set an ambitious goal under the old MCAS system for CPI points in math. That was five points higher than it was a state average. It was five points higher than we had ever achieved. Uh, and of course, there's going to be pushback around that. Well, we're always, we always do this. How are we going to get it five points higher? And we didn't get there in year one. We did in year two and year three. And so these goals, I'm perfectly willing to accept as the leader of the school uh, to get, didn't meet, not enough progress or whatever the, the box that gets checked on in June. It isn't about what my personal goal is, uh, my personal rating is. It is about us setting ambitious goals that put student interests first. Uh, and so some of these folks are there. And I say that publicly tonight because that will be my directive to the principal and, and leadership. We can still give a teacher proficient or exemplary uh, in their individual ratings if they don't necessarily meet the district graduation goal. The district graduation goal here has never been met. About 15 years, it's never been met. Uh, but that doesn't mean that shouldn't be our goal. That is where state schools are across the state. We want to be striving towards that point. Uh, and it'll keep us focused on making sure that we keep climbing. And I, and I think that that's an important life perspective for all of us is we, we shouldn't be setting personal goals for ourselves that we hurt over uh, in two days or two months. We want to be setting personal goals that are going to be challenging and push us to always try and be our best. Um, and so I want to publicly state that to the school community who's listening to our students, to our teachers. Um, I will stand with them and behind them as we work every day to try and be better than we were the day before. Uh, that doesn't need to impact what our proficient or exemplary ratings are. We just keep doing the best that we can and, and we'll be proficient or exemplary. We'll actually be moving more towards exemplary. So um, I'm happy to entertain any questions around the two, uh, around the student learning special practice goal or the two district goals that I set forth tonight. Be a motion be in order to accept. Have a second. Okay. Second. On the question. Question. Watson. I was just calling by saying it is a. I've seen a lot of these and it is a very high goal. But again, I respect you. Your comment you said. I have a feel that high goal and make it an easy goal. So. Good choice. Thank you. Comments. Question. Or the comments or questions? Motion to approve. I mean, a motion made. I all those in favor? All right. Opposed? No voted. Uh, discussion on substitute pay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, no action required tonight, but I did want to advise uh, the committee that we are about to undergo a thorough and comprehensive review of substitute pay scales, both within the district and in the region. And so I've asked. Uh, Mr. Stewart and others to begin that conversation. Principal Williams will be at a, a South Coast principals meeting on Thursday. I've asked him to bring that issue up as well. I want to I want to identify what we pay uh, for substitute teachers at Greater New Bedford Oak Tech and where that lines up with the region's substitutes. As you can imagine, substitute teachers are difficult to come by for everybody at this point. I want to make sure that we're offering a competitive uh, pay for that. For that work, so we're going to do a pretty comprehensive analysis over the next 30 days and we expect to have something to present uh, to you folks uh, in a month time. But I wanted to kind of advise you of that. And I also wanted to advise teachers who I know are going the extra mile here covering classes when some of their their colleagues are out and that is that is not easy and that is a burden. And so um, I'm deeply appreciative of that work because it's what's required to make sure students are getting the best education. Uh, but I owe them, as well as this committee, uh, a comprehensive review of the structures to see if there's anything we can do as a district to try to alleviate that burden on teachers. And that is what we'll do over the next 30 days, and we will get a report to you in October. Any questions relative to substitute pay? Okay. Uh, I don't believe a motion is needed for that. No action. Okay, moving right along. Seven report on personal appointments, retirements, resignations. Oh, sure. Motion to place on file. We have a motion to place on file. We have a second. We have a motion and a second on the question. Those in favor? Aye. So voted. Information of superintendent's family welcome back letter. 
Watson. Just wanted to include in the packets the welcome back letter we sent to families. And as I indicated earlier, I'll be providing copies of the committee of the weekly updates to the staff uh, beginning in October. Should necessary. No. Uh, moving right along. Fall athletic schedule. Give you a package of copy to fall athletic. What schedules? Does anybody have a question relative to the athletic schedule? Yeah. Yes, it is nice to have. Good. You know, action necessary in that. Odyssey report schedule. Just going to continue the practice of my predecessor uh, to uh, reveal the art, the artisan communication schedule by department. That is a copy of this year's schedule that will begin next month as well. Uh, so you can look forward to um, some reviews from each of those academies and departments. Any questions on it? <coughs> Action necessary. Uh, next is the INX now COVID 19 theft and safe protocol. Yeah, just uh, that's the informational packet we sent home to families. That's what we're using to kind of educate people around the practice uh, so that you, you folks also have that information. Next protocol. And the update letter you want to... Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't include those. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll include all of September and October and next and next. So folks know we're we're sending that <laughs> staff every Sunday night just to kind of advise them of, of the weekend and uh, welcome them back and, and know we're all in this together. So okay, at this time I will ask if there's any other committee discussion. None. The business that might probably come before us. Do you have any? Bring none. Moving on to executive session of the chapter 30, section 21. Committee will be adjourning. This is executive session of the chapter 30, section 21 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Veteran educators union to discuss strategy with respect to the collective bargaining. Administrators Union. The chair has determined that the open meeting will have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position. Committee members will not be returning to open session. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Educators Association to discuss collective bargaining with Greater New Bedford Administrators Association. To consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate property to expand our school facilities. This time I'll call mm -hmm. the roll call boy. We want to executive session. Dr. Marlin? Mrs. Rivero? Mr. Oliveira? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Motion is unanimous. Okay, the meeting is now adjourned. We'll move into executive session. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for your time.